Alright, so I forgot to do a video on this, but no Trek Monda is out. Disc only, uh, try and get more aero, etc, etc. It's basically like all bikes go into this one sort of hybrid, uh, lightweight aero bike. Um, this is on Bike Radar, um, just saying they're trying to get faster up outdoors. Um, saying the differences between the 2018 and the 2021, how many uh, seconds you're saving, etc, etc. Um, you know, I think this is just weight saving, it's nothing too special. I mean, maybe there's a bit of aero saving on like some faster climbs, um, potentially. Um, I mean, Outdoors has probably ridden at like 20k an hour or something, so, you know, there could be some, some aero savings, and then obviously they're saying it's faster on the flat, so that's not too surprising. I think, you know, they've got a new geometry where it's like 1.5, so it's, they used to have two fits where they had like uh, aggressive and non-aggressive, and now they just have sort of one. Um, no women's bike, they just sort of have a bike for everyone and just different sizes, which I think sort of makes sense. Um, and then they've got 28, they're getting rid of the, sorry, 28 mil wheel uh, tires, which isn't too exciting. Getting rid of BB90 um, and having T47, um, which again is like, it's a change. I don't know, I've had BB86 with Giant and it's been fine. Apparently BB90 isn't ideal, so that's probably a good thing. You've got a new cockpit which is good but it's only 38 which is a bit annoying you probably want 36 uh, but it, it is very light it is very light for sure carbon wheels i'm not going to speak about them because they're carbon wheels and they're a bit boring um so anyway we go to cycling weekly so they also have the same spiel um that we don't really need to speak about because it's not to show you anything new um but i think the biggest thing to think about really is that obviously it's disc only um so you've got to think like how much do you value discs so this is my personal opinion i think a very high end you know, an aero disc brake bike, you can get to be 6.75 kilos. Like, this track and Monda, if I was racing, that'd be class. I had unlimited coin. I mean, why wouldn't you buy it? Like, 9.7k, like, yes, yeah, it's outrageous. But it's 6.75 kilos. It's got disc brakes. It'd be class climbing, class descending. No, no, no issues in the wet, etc., etc. Like, I understand that. Um, however, my opinion is that if you want a 6.75 kilo bike, like you want to like bike, you can get one on AliExpress super light. Obviously, you might say, oh, it doesn't ride as well, but even a rim brake bike, like my TCR is 7. Point, I think it was 7.2 kilos, 7.4 kilos with 105, um, which obviously is 700 grams, but it costs like 2K. So, you know, there's big differences. But I think where the disc brake aero, obviously, like this is an aero, out on out aero bike, but it, it's got aero features which are going to increase the weight. Where it rapidly decreases, is when you get to the the different models like the ones down here nine kilos for to like a two thousand pound bike like at the lower end it's the biggest determinant of bike ability in my opinion is stiffness i'm sure it'll be stiff but you know bikes don't have to be expensive to be stiff it's quite easy that and lightweight and i think the frame plus the disc and everything nine kilos for a two thousand pound bike is a lot of money and I think a nine kilo bike, when you're riding it, you're like, oh, this is not not the one. And I was talking to my friend about it today, and like a lot of people get aero bikes, but I think after a while they're just like, actually, the bike isn't the biggest determinant on aero anyway. It's the wheels and your position and skin suit and all that stuff, obviously. So I think in terms of the track, like it's it's a lot of money for a bike that will be good for sure, but it's so heavy. It's unbelievable. Eight kilos for a three thousand pound bike. I mean, that's unheard of. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. Um, and I mean, this is with Di two. Like, okay, it's Ultegra Di two is a little heavy, but like, still, it's like seven point eight kilos. It's absolutely crazy. Um, and for me personally, I think if I was gonna buy like a really hot top end bike, should I get this? Like, obviously, yeah, it just makes sense because you know you're gonna get a bike which is gonna weigh six kilos, um, six point seven kilos full disc, everything you ever need, it's going to be class, electronic gears, like literally unreal. Um, but if I was going to spend like 2k on a bike, I won't be spending 2k on the Trekamonda for sure. I won't even spend 3k on the Trekamonda. It's just so expensive for a bike that's like, it's not even that, like, like 8 kilos for a 3,350 pound bike. Like, okay, maybe it's not going to necessarily like determine your performance. I understand like 1 kilo for me with like, you know, a 60 kilo-ish, like my total body weight is like around you know 68 70 kilos so one kilo doesn't sound much but the, the thing you've got to think about is that it's the frame like the bike itself is like not you know eight kilos so the difference between eight kilo and seven kilo bike is actually significant because obviously it's up like one over eight which is what two and a half percent so 
is going to have a significant uh, determinant on feel. And I think feel is often sometimes underrated because if you enjoy riding your bike, then ride it more, you're going to get faster. So I think, you know, obviously there's no right answer for the bike. It's all about you. But I think you do have to think like, in order to get discs at a lower price point, what am I sacrificing? And you're sacrificing weight massively and maybe worse components. But I think it's mainly just weight. Like 105 is fine. 105 does the job for sure. But nine kilos, I don't think I could act that. Um, that's like almost my TT bike. My TT bike is probably maybe a kilo heavier. <laughs> it's like mental. And I think my TT bike is horrible to ride on the climbs. I really don't enjoy it. And if that had to be my everyday bike, and it was nine kilos, I spent 2K on it, I'd be crying. I'm pretty sure my alloy bike that I bought for like 750 quid is less than nine kilos. Obviously, it's rim brake, but you know, like Tiagra, it's like, I literally swear it would be that same weight. It's actually unbelievable. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Let me know what your thoughts are about like aero disc brake. Well, this isn't really aero, but you know what I mean, like disc brake bikes and like the aero features. Like, is it actually worth it or is it only really worth it if you want to spend loads of money? Because in my opinion, they only make sense when you start spending like five, six K and then you can get it down to normal weight. Like, you know, all the weight, all the aero, all the disc, and then fair enough, makes sense. But otherwise, I think it's just a bit of a, it's not a gimmick. It's just, I just think that you could have more fun on a bike. If I was going to spend 2.3k, I think I could have more fun on a bike, spent on a rim brake bike, make it super light, and I think up the climbs you'd have more fun. So anyway, cheers for watching, hope you enjoy, and uh, see you in the next one.